Every industry has its own jargon and medical device industry is no different. If you have come across terms in your quality management system that cause a lot of confusion and problems in implementation, you are not alone. Hello and welcome. I am Naveen Agarwal and I help medical companies build safe products through a quality management system that's not only compliant but also agile and focused on the needs of patients and doctors. So call me or email me with your questions and let me know how I can help you. This video is one out of the series of videos I have made that talk about terms and definitions and address a few points of confusion that I have seen in my experience. If you have implemented ISO 14971 in your quality management system for risk, you are already familiar with these three terms, hazard, hazardous situation, and harm. In this video, I will focus on the term hazard. Check out the other videos on my channel that talk about hazardous situation and harm, but keep in mind that these three terms are interrelated with each other. In my experience, I have seen a lot of confusion and problems in implementation of risk management system because of lack of clarity about these three terms. Not only what they mean individually, but how they relate with each other. So we have to be able to understand their definitions and their relationship. ISO 14971 defines a hazard as a potential source of harm. But what is it? Is it a thing, an action, or an activity? It's best to understand these terms by illustration through some examples. You can see a few examples of hazards in this slide. Starting from left, electricity is a hazard because it has the potential to cause even death. Microbes can cause sickness and chemical exposure can result in burns or toxicity. Surgery itself is a hazard because it can result in many complications. Everyday activities such as driving is also a hazard. And finally, medical devices also present many hazards. There are many different types of hazards and they can be classified in different categories. ISO 14971 has a very nice table in Annex C, which I highly recommend you to take a look at. And I recommend making a master table of hazards that you can use to specifically define hazards relevant for your business and products. And that master table can be used over and over again for many different projects. One of the most common issues I have seen is confusing a device failure with a hazard or a device failure mode which is basically one or more ways in which a device can fail to meet its intended function with hazardous situation. So failure confused with a hazard and a failure mode confused with a hazardous situation. And I'll explain why this is a problem. Failure modes and failure mode analysis is very important to make sure that you have high reliability in the design of your product, manufacturing process, software, maintenance activities, or any other activity that may involve some risk of failure. It's a very good tool to implement controls to make sure you have reliability in your system. However, technically, a failure mode is not a hazard. It may trigger an event which will cause a cascade of events to happen, which may lead to a hazardous situation. So there is a sequence of events that happen before a patient or a user is exposed to harm. There is not a direct connection between a device failure or a harm. Same goes for failure modes. They are not technically hazardous situations. Failure mode analysis is very important, but it's a tool for engineering risk analysis. There has to be a link between the failure mode analysis and safety risk assessment within the context of ISO 14971. And the reason for that is because ISO 14971 specifically focuses on risk of harm. We'll talk about harm in other videos. So what I'm talking about here is a transition document taking failure mode analysis and connecting it to safety risk assessment. When you build the correct linkages between your failure modes 
device failures, process failures. To safety risk, you enhance the ability of your risk management process to consistently and more accurately monitor and control safety risks. It takes a little bit of work up front, but when you build these foundational documents, you improve the consistency of the whole process and it makes life much easier. So in conclusion, there are two key points to remember about hazards. A hazard is a potential source of harm. It doesn't always lead to harm, but it can. And the second point is failures are not hazards. Thank you for your interest and attention. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel. Please visit my website www.exceedqm.com to learn more about this topic. I also have an article on my blog that provides more details and offers more guidance. So check that out. You can also sign up for my monthly newsletter. It takes only 15 minutes every month to stay current on what's going on in our industry and it's absolutely free.